Hey, Walden Church, it's Monday, and uh, every Monday we have a prayer group that gets together Monday morning. We have prayer and we have coffee uh, across in the Family Life Center. We just get together, talk, we pray, right? We have a little uh, devotional before our week begins, and I thought, you know what, let's just keep that going. So last Monday, last week, we did a video devotional here on YouTube. We'll do that again this week, and then I want you to know that every Monday, you can keep coming back to YouTube. There'll be a devotional here for you in the morning just to start your week. So we'll keep doing that every Monday morning. And then last Thursday, we did uh, Facebook Live. And so we'll do Facebook Live every Thursday. And so you'll be able to go to Facebook uh, and watch uh, me live in the church on Thursday, and we'll have some announcements, we'll tell you what's going on. Uh, of course, we'll always have a little bit of devotion, a little prayer time, and you'll be able to interact, right, with Facebook Live, it allows you to interact. So, devotional, little, little devotional for Monday. Uh, today, I was thinking about the church and what all the different churches are doing all across America. Uh, interestingly, somebody posted, uh, you know, on one of the Walden Facebook pages, they said, you know, which church is broadcasting live this Sunday. And I just saw a flurry of answers, right? Every church was broadcasting live. Every church is trying to reach their congregation and their people. And I thought, you know what, we're, you just see this real sense of unity right now with everything. And that just made me think of Jesus's prayer. Jesus's prayer for the church for unity. In John 17, verse 21, Jesus prays to the Father that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me." Now this is a prayer that Jesus prays right before he goes to the cross. He is praying for unity, our unity. And many times we use this in the church as a local congregation, and we talk about how it's important that we as a church, right, as a body, are united. And we should be, absolutely. But Jesus isn't praying for one church in this verse. He is praying for the global church. He is praying for all of us to be united. I don't know that we've done a really great job being united as a church. Uh, a lot of times uh, we feel like we're in competition with each other, right? Someone leaves your church and goes to another church and we freak out and say, ah, oh, why'd they leave our church? Why are they going to that church? That church has a bigger youth group. That church has a bigger sanctuary, right? That church has a bus ministry. And we're jealous of other churches. And we separate ourselves by denomination. We say these are Presbyterians and these are Baptists. Right? We'll say that church is Pentecostal, right? We'll say that church is Lutheran. That church is evangelical. That's a Bible church, right? And I don't know why that is. When Jesus' prayer was not for separation, not for distinction, but for unity. And the reason why he prays for unity was so that the world may know. Which means our testimony will be better to the world. And that's really what this is all about, right? Our testimony, sharing the gospel, our testimony will be better to the world if we are united. So that got me thinking about praying with the church. Not praying in the church. We pray in the church all the time, right? You come to church, you pray. You expect to pray in the church. In fact, if a whole church service went by and we didn't pray, you'd notice. You'd say, hey, you know what? I don't think we even prayed, right? So we're used to praying in the church. But you can pray with the church, even alone, even by yourself, even as you're hunkered down in your house during this odd time that we're living in, you can pray with the church. Now, how do you pray with the church? Well, we pray with the church every time we say the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer was something that Jesus told the church to pray. Uh, you can pray with the church every time you read the psalm. The book of Psalms uh, is a collection of prayers and songs, and they're songs that all the church has access to. You pray with the church when you pray those. You also pray with the church when you pray the hours. Now, what is the hours? The hours are times of day where the church all prays together at the same time. There's usually a prayer before breakfast. There's a prayer at lunch. 
There's a prayer uh, at midday between lunch and dinner. There's a, and there's a prayer uh, before you go to bed. There's even a prayer in the middle of the night. Some people take these prayers very seriously and they pray with the church on the hours. And that got me thinking about the church bells. You know, we recently just reset the church bells because of the time change. And so the church bells are actually now chiming correctly with the hours. And I thought a lot of you can hear the church bells from where you live. But most of you know the church bells go off at noon. In fact, they chime at noon for about five minutes. They do appeal where they play several different songs. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great reminder that when we hear the church bells at noon, that we would globally pray with the church. You know, right now more than ever, the church is united against a common enemy. I think we are all praying for and looking forward to a day when this virus is gone. But it's not just the church that is praying against this global enemy, the globe, right? The globe is united against this. We have something to be united against. We have a banner that we can all agree that this is where we are sending all of our energy and all of our thoughts and all of our prayers. We have an opportunity to pray with the global church. So right now, I don't care if you're, you're a member of our church or uh, any church or any denomination anywhere across the United States or Texas or the world. If you are watching me right now, I would ask you to pray with the church. Pray with the church. May we be united in this effort of prayer. That at noon, wherever you are, wherever you live, at noon, whether you can hear the church bells or not, that you will pray for the health and wellness of the world, of the world. That God would remove this virus from us, that health would be restored, people would be healed, and that his name would be glorified, that Christ's name would be taught and preached and be just the shining example of love and grace in this world and that every knee would bow, every tongue confess because of Christ's prayer, because of Christ's prayer that the world would believe. First John 5.14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. That is such a great reminder. Not only does God hear our prayer, he hears the world's prayer and we can be united in his will that we would pray for the health and wellness, not just of our city or our church or our state or our country, but the globe. We pray with the global church. Would you join me? Would you join Walden Church in prayer? Hey, like I said, Keep coming back every single Monday. We'll have another devotional for you. Uh, we'll try to keep these going for as long as we can. We love you guys. We miss you. We hope to see you soon. Bye.